So I'm going to use the disc sander to try and get uh, the straight parts as much as I can before I finish out with a file. And the problem with the disc sander is it's coming down on a curve. Now I have it going in reverse right now, so it's going to be coming around this direction. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can get in on this side as close as I can. Um, <clears throat> and then I can get on the back side as well because it's open back here, whereas on that side I have a break. So I'm going to clean this up as close as I can with the disc sander. It is round, so wherever I stop sanding, it's going to leave a mark. And uh, if I'm too aggressive, that's going to take a while to clean up. So I need to make sure that um, I don't get too aggressive with the sander. It'll take off a lot in a hurry, which oftentimes doesn't help. Now I'm going to take a file and a piece of sandpaper, clean up the rest, and then I'll be ready to router. So the last thing you're going to be left with is some potential burn marks left from the bandsaw and some uh, parts where I went past too far. And so I'm going to try and get those out. When I grade this or where, when your instructor grades this, the primary thing I'm looking for is following directions, using all the machines. And then uh, specifically for this, I want straight lines. I want nice gentle curves, no bumps in there. And then I don't want any burn marks. So uh, if you have any of those, this is your time to spend some quality time with uh, either your headphones on if your instructor lets you or um, focusing on these burns. So I've got a couple files here. I've got an aggressive one. I've got a pretty fine one and uh, I've got some sandpaper that I'm going to just go through this and clean it up before I get to the router. So these burn marks immediately draw my attention. So I'm going to check first with a file if I can clean those off. Because if I can clean them off with a file, that's going to be the fastest. And then I have some aggressive sandpaper. I want to use something aggressive. I have students that oftentimes will get like some 220 sandpaper and they're just going to sit in a corner and uh, three days later they're like, hey, it looks beautiful and uh, they've lost three days of the project. So always start with the most aggressive, get done with that, and then come back to the 220 if you're looking to impress somebody. So I'm gonna clean up the corners and uh, the flats with my aggressive first uh, to try and clean those up. So that didn't take very long and you can barely see the burn mark anymore. I'll finish it off with sandpaper when I get there. When I get to a corner like this, I've got a little bit of an indent, and so I'm going to use my file that's got a file on both the edge and the flat so I can clean that at the same time. If you went too deep pass, sometimes it's best to go back to the bandsaw and cut a little off with the bandsaw first to try and catch up with your mark if you went too far past. Okay, last thing I'm going to do now is go to the router before I do my final sanding. And uh, when you use the router, remember to go the direction, the opposite direction that the router is going. So I'm going to push the opposite direction. Now I'm going to router everything except for this whole bottom edge. And this is a place where students often get so focused on routering that they tend to router all the way around and uh, they router this part too. If you router this part when you're cutting on the table saw it's hard to tell if you're sitting flat on it. Um, <clears throat> when I sit this flat on a board it's really nice to have the edges 
uh, right down to a point so I can see I'm sitting flat on it when I push something through on the table saw. So this edge should not be routered, neither should this edge. The whole bottom side should not be routered. So if it helps you, you might want to start at that point so that when you finish on this other point, it's pretty easy to know where to stop. So on this part also, I'm going to router all the way around and I'm going to stop right on this edge right here. I'm not going to router out my uh, 90 degree push joint because when you push a project through the table saw that's going to hold it. So that's an edge that's going to be setting on your project too when you set it through the table saw. So again, I'm going to start routering here, I'm going to router all the way around and then I'm going to finish right after that point. And it's kind of an easy place to know to stop because otherwise it's really hard to wrap around that corner you'll find when you do this one. So we're going to try that out now. So I routered everything except the handle. I'm going to do that next. Uh, I just want to show you when I go too slow or if I spend too much time, um, it leaves little burn marks on the edge. I'm not really worried about that. This is fairly soft plywood and so I'm going to take my file to that in a little bit and clean off those last marks. And if there's any burn marks, I'll use my sandpaper on that. So that's why I'm just going over it now. I'm not too worried about it and I'll come back for that. Again, if the sandpaper is not going fast enough, uh, switch back to a file to get those aggressive burn marks. Notice I switched over to the round part of the file when I was doing the curves. If you use a flat part on, it will dig in farther on your curve. So I flip that upside down. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is walk around my sandpaper, get off any pencil lines or anything else. And this is where, if this was out of pen, this would be really hard to get this out. Right now it's out of pencil, I should be able to sand that out. And then I'm going to go and look if there's any bandsaw marks left. Um, and uh, take out those bandsaw marks with whatever uh, needs to be done, whatever tool needs to be done to do that. Um, I'm going to put my name on the bottom side right here on this bottom edge. It looks usually pretty ugly if you do it on the handle. So just put your name on the bottom side. A lot of times uh, you want to do that with permanent ink so nobody uh, steals that and then turn it in. Um, on a project like this, uh, when I grade it or when your instructor grades it, uh, a lot of times it's just the value of what it looks like initially. So when you pick something up, um, we have a rubric, but if it looks ugly, odds are it's going to be an ugly grade. So try and take your time to make sure your lines are straight, curves are gentle and there's not like big bumps in there, uh, no bandsaw marks, no burn marks, and no pencil marks. And always check with your instructor if you want before you turn it in so he can or she can help you with whatever marks they see off the bat. <laughs>